Chevrolet is hoping that this new subcompact Sonic will create a boom with prospective Canadian buyers. The problem for General Motors Lacey is that almost every mainstream brand has come out with a new subcompact in the last year or so. The Ford Fiesta kicked it off, followed by the Mazda 2, Hyundai Accent, Kia Rio, Nissan Versa, Toyota Yaris, and so on. Sonic is the replacement for the less than attractive or desirable Aveo that was made in Korea by Daewoo and then brought over here to our shores. GM has replaced it with the Sonic that's already being sold in over 60 countries and is built in Michigan. Designed for young buyers getting into the car market or as a second family vehicle, the look is sporty and functional. The nose has a VW Golf GTI inspired look complete with four round headlights, which thankfully have not been covered with clear plastic trim. This Sonic has a nice stance. It's wide and it's quite tall, which offers good side windows. In order to make the car look sportier, they have just one handle on the door down here on the front, which makes it look like a coupe. The second handle is actually incorporated into the door trim. This is easy enough to open if you're an adult, but remember this vehicle is targeted also at young families. For example, my nine-year-old thought it looked cool, but really struggled to open the back door. The hatch is a good size and has a removable floor panel, which makes the floor lower and offers solid cargo space. Not the largest subcompact on the market, that honor goes to the Nissan Versa. The Sonic is certainly one of the biggest though, offering extra width and height. The Sonic starts at $14,500 and is a good price if you're in the market for a subcompact car. The seats are very comfortable and if you're a taller driver, you'll really like the fact that the bottom of the seat's a little bit longer so there's extra support. They're also height adjustable and the foam is very comfortable. These features are important, especially if you spend a lot of time behind the wheel in bumper to bumper traffic. Now they've done a good job of trying to make the center console a little bit more funky and unique by giving it a very industrial looking center pod. The digital readout is about the same size as a smartphone. Zach really likes it, but got to be honest, it's a little bit too masculine for me. The dash is simple and similar in design to the award-winning Chevrolet Cruze, but there are no soft-touch materials found on the dash. The Ford Fiesta has the soft-touch Contest 1. The Kia Rio hatchback also starts at just under 16,000, but it comes standard with heated front seats that's a very attractive feature. Heated seats are offered as an option on the Sonic, but only on the mid-priced LT trim seen here. With most subcompact cars, you only have one engine, but with the Sonic, you have a choice of two. The base engine is a 1.8 liter four cylinder with 136 horsepower fitted into the LS and LT trim levels. The LTZ is the top model and it comes with a 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder with 138 horsepower, but substantially more torque. Those are the two engines that are also offered in the cruise, and having driven both of them in that car, I can say they're more than capable. The 1.8 liter that's found in our test unit does a great job in the city and a really good job on the highway because of the six-speed automatic transmission. I really would have liked to have gotten my hands on the turbo because I have a feeling it would have been a blast to drive in such a small car. One of the things that's often taken for granted is outward visibility, and in the Sonic's case, it's very good. The room is surprising for a little car. It kind of reminds me of the older Golf in terms of size. I think that the Fiesta and the Accent have the quietest interior of the cars in this class, but the Sonic is right up there. I was pleasantly surprised with how quiet the interior is, especially on the highway. Very little noise comes into the car from the tires in the road. Now we mentioned off the top there's been a whole host of new subcompact cars come into the marketplace. I've had a chance to drive them all and the biggest takeaway is just how good subcompact cars have become. No longer relegated to poor students, these are cars you could buy, they're inexpensive to buy, inexpensive to operate and you could easily live with them every day. This Sonic's a perfect example, the one we have here has power windows, door locks, cruise control, radio uh, controls here on the steering wheel, it's got satellite radio, USB connectivity, it goes on and on and on. So subcompact cars should really be looked upon as everyday perfect transportation. 
It should be pointed out that Kia and Hyundai are also able to produce 138 horsepower, but they do it from a 1.6 liter direct injection engine that's proving to be more fuel efficient. As is the case with the Cruze, the Sonic is smooth and relatively quiet, offering a lot of comfort and insulation from the outside world. The steering is precise and offers good feedback to the driver, which isn't always the case with others in this class. The brakes are predictable and the 1.8 liter engine is a good performer. As Lacey said, the turbo with a manual would have been a lot more fun. What I particularly like about the Sonic compared to some of the others in the class is uh, most people use electric power steering and this system is very good, it's precise. This car has excellent drivability, the brakes are very predictable, it handles very well. I would place this car probably only second to the Ford Fiesta in terms of driving dynamics. Okay, Zach, do you think that this Sonic is going to make a boom in the subcompact market? Well, the problem with making a boom is you have to be heard over the crowd, and it's very crowded in the subcompact class. The Honda Fit is the oldest car, and it's a very good product. So this Sonic has some tough competition, but what it does have going for it and what I like, first and foremost, it's a very comfortable interior. The seats are nicely padded, they're roomy, they've got lots of thigh support, the car feels big on the inside, great windows. This is a really good day-to-day -day commuter car. Also, the engine, the transmission, the power of this vehicle all balance very nicely. It's got good feedback to the driver, and the 1.8 liter engine is nicely matched to the size of this car. So it has good power, but on the downside, it doesn't have the best in class economy because it has a bigger engine. For example, when you compare it to the Kia and Hyundai products, they've got 1.6 liter engines plus direct injection. They just sip fuel. And also, the main competitors for this car really are going to be those Korean cars. And when you look at the higher end trim level, on those products. The fit and finish on the inside really is second to none, and it makes this one look a little bit less than polished. So Lacey, what do you think of the Sonic? Well, Zach, as you mentioned, this market is quite crowded, and a really standout feature on the Sonic is the fact that it is offered with two engine options. Nobody else has that. It's got a very comfortable and quiet interior, and it has a good list of standard and safety features, and I really like the exterior styling. However, on that note, I'm not crazy at all about the interior styling. And I found the engine to be a little bit sluggish in normal drive mode, so the best way to drive it was to put it in the shiftable automatic mode. And that being said, I don't like the toggle button to shift gears. But that being said, it is a lot better than the Aveo that it's replacing. That's kind of faint praise. The Aveo wasn't much to write home about. Now, Lacey, you think about this. We've got the automatic with the base engine. You get a manual transmission with the turbo. What do you have then? A sonic boom. In the market for a small car? See all our reviews at drivingtelevision.com.